Hey guys, it's Pete here, and today I've got with me Fuji's newest medium format offering, the GFX 50S2. Now this isn't gonna be an in-depth review, so we're not gonna get bogged down in the technical specs of this camera, even though they are remarkable. This is more gonna be an in-field review, where I take it for what I love doing the most, which is a hike, um, and hopefully capture some beautiful landscape images along the way. Now today I'm pairing it with the 3570 GF lens, which is super versatile, and it's also a very manageable weight for long distance hikes like this. And to really put it through its paces, I'm taking it to the mountain utopia of Torridon. So if you like your mountains on a grand scale, this really is the place for you. So fingers crossed, the clouds lift a little bit for this hike, um, but there really is nothing else left to do than get to our location and then go hiking. Okay, so we are out for a hike in Torridon. It's super hot at the moment, as it has been for the last four days, which is pretty uncharacteristic of Scotland. But uh, you can see the, the mountain we're hiking up to just over my shoulder there. It's one of the quieter ones in Torridon, because it's not quite a Munro, so it doesn't quite harry that esteem that some of the other big boys here do, like uh, Ben Alligan and Ben Egg. Plan is to hike up there, set up camp, get to the summit for sunset, and hopefully catch a good sunset. I've been here four days on this Fujifilm project, and every single morning there has been uh, a temperature inversion and leading to low clouds in the valley. Today is the same conditions as it has been for the last four days. It's forecast for the same overnight. So fingers crossed, we wake up above the clouds tomorrow. So yeah, enough talking, let's get to the summit. We've just reached the summit after what was a pretty demanding hike uh, in some pretty hot conditions. It sort of brings me on to my first point about this camera. Even though it's a traditional medium format, it's super lightweight and compact, so I wouldn't, it wouldn't deter me from bringing it. It actually feels more like a full frame camera in my hand, but obviously with the capabilities and the sensor of a medium format, which is, which is amazing. Also, it feels really sturdy just to hold. Uh, as you can see, the, the grip here is quite large, um, and then my thumb wraps nicely around this little knob at the back which basically means that it doesn't feel like I'm gonna lose or lose grip at all whilst I'm freehanding it, which I do tend to do quite a lot. So yeah, first impressions are all good. Well, now we are gonna head to the summit. As you can see behind me, there's some low clouds seeping in. It looks like we're gonna get an inversion for sunset. So yeah, fingers crossed we get some good snaps. So at this point, conditions were getting pretty spicy and I sort of lost track of time. But I still remember well the first few images that I took with this camera. Gazing through that large bright viewfinder really helped me visualize the scene better. I felt like I was taking my time um, and this camera made it really easy to dial in the best composition. Also straight away you could see on, on the screen that the images were razor sharp front to back. Now, this is one of the first images I took. And I really like this image because of the soft red glow that's illuminating the side of the peak. It's nicely side lit and the colors just seem to contrast really nicely. I found the tonality to be immaculate and the colours just really enjoyable to play around with in post-processing. Now I usually shoot on a crop sensor for the X-T4 which is what I'm using for this video and I often underexpose images that are pointed at the sun just so I don't blow out the highlights. Now I found that because of the larger sensor on this medium format camera the size of the pixels is actually larger and you notice the increased dynamic range, being able to perfectly expose images where you're directly pointing the camera at the sun without blowing out the highlights or being left to pull back as much of the shadows as possible in post. I really like this shot of Alec, and I always like to include more lifestyle type images, as I think having a full set of images from a camp like this really tells a strong story of what it was like to be up there at the time. And on this night, having the whole summit to ourselves without a drop of wind and conditions like this really was a memory that will stick in my mind for a long time. So, just wrapped up shooting uh, this sunset and can honestly say it's one of the best sunsets I've ever witnessed. As we hiked up, some low clouds started to fill all of the valleys. And as you can see behind me, uh, quite literally the whole of the valley floor, as far as the eye can see, is covered in cloud, which is just outrageous. 
Anyway, we're going to carry on shooting through Blue Hour now to, um, to test the ISO on this thing and then going to turn in for the night and fingers crossed if these conditions stay, sunrise is going to be incredible. So it is five in the morning, uh, just got out of our tents. You can see the full moon just there over my shoulder. Perfectly still night, barely any wind, but just enough to sort of keep the midges at bay. But for the first, I don't know, 15 minutes, been walking around, no tripod attached, uh, still not much light, just to sort of try and test out the capabilities of the IBIS on the medium format, because traditionally you wouldn't use a medium format without a tripod. I must say I've been like thoroughly impressed shooting down to sort of 1 60th of a second, I'm conscious of the fact that I'm not using a tripod, but producing some amazing images, which is great, you know, because being able to use a medium format uh, as a bit of a running gun, like mountain camera, just seems ludicrous, but somehow Fuji have managed to get all of that technology into a medium format. Yeah, just going to spend the rest of the morning grabbing a few landscape photos and then probably head to the actual true summit that we haven't made it to yet because we ran out of time and decided the view was actually better from where we're camping. Um, so that's the plan for the next little bit. So off we headed for the other summit and you'll have to forgive me as I left my video camera behind. We just went light, mainly because we didn't think we'd find much over here, but just felt that we had to take off the, the true summit of this peak and uh, how wrong we were. The light would normally be quite harsh by now, but the sun was sort of kept at bay by some wispy clouds, which ended up perfectly diffusing the light. Now, I was only equipped with the GF3570, which is a 2855 equivalent lens on full frame, which would normally bother me because I usually like to carry a telephoto. However, this sort of made way for another advantage of shooting medium format, because I found in post-processing, the cropping ability was superb and I was able to pick out small details in my wide shots and really hone in on them with the final images still staying sharp. So thanks for watching my first ever YouTube video. It was never meant to be an in-depth review uh, on the camera, more of a hands-on, you know, how it feels to me and how I use it when I go hiking and do my landscape photography. <laughs> We've been blessed with some incredible conditions, perhaps some of the best that I've ever seen. And uh, I've just been blown away by how powerful this camera is. The autofocus, the IBIS, the colour reproduction, the dynamic range, and then just the, the raw files that it puts out are just a pleasure to edit. Definitely been converted to medium format after shooting on crop sensor for so long. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully there's some more videos like this to come. I think I'm just gonna sit here, enjoy my tea, and uh, take in this view for a little bit longer. See you next time. Thank you.